Yeah. Come on out, dude. Come on. I'm sorry, man. I didn't know it. Here. Put your hands down. Wait, wait, wait. Do not tell me what to do. I know. Just move. No. Because I'm sick, though. I'm, I want to go to the hospital. Oh, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Federal Detective Jacob Grant was involved in an undercover drug operation in January 2015 when he was mistaken for a suspect by Albuquerque PD Lieutenant Greg Brackle. Bad signal, bad signal, bad signal. Yeah, go ahead and take Hands up! Would you see any rational person doing this? Hands up! Passenger, get your hands up! Put your hands Put up! Put your hands where I can see them! Put your hands where I can see them! Good! Good! Holy, back out! And then it dawned on him, realizing the consequences of his actions brought about by sheer impatience. Holy, back out! Holy, back out! Oh, that was Jacob! Are you okay? Come on out, dude! Come on, I'm sorry, man! I didn't know it was you! Come here! Come here, Jacob! Jacob! Jacob is shot! Get him back! Hard to do it, 55! Go back in there, man! Lieutenant Greg Brackle fired at Detective Jacob Grant nine times at point blank range, nearly ending his life. A brief moment of questioning could have resolved the situation more quickly and with far less lethal consequences. Now, all Brackle can do is regret his decisions as he administers first aid. Where you hit? Where you hit? Oh, yeah, right he got hit in the water! I'm hit so hard, man! Oh, my God. Right here! Right here! You're good. You're gonna be okay, dude! You're gonna be okay! You're gonna be alright, dude. You're gonna be alright. You're gonna be alright, Jacob. You're, right. You're gonna be okay. Apparent Lieutenant Brackle had missed a critical briefing that morning regarding Detective Grant's undercover operation details, his attire, location, and role for the day. This costly oversight resulted in Grant being injured, with bullets impacting nearly all his vital organs. Subsequently, Grant filed a lawsuit against the city of Albuquerque, its police department, and Lieutenant Brackle. Like I said, given the situation, I'm not going to complain. In March 2016, the city settled with Grant for $6.5 million to compensate him for the ordeal he endured. Do you think this was fair compensation for the harm he suffered? On October 20th, 2019, in Greenville County, a deputy from the sheriff's office, Ashley Cure, responded to a gas station where a man was reported shoplifting. She recognized the man from a previous nonviolent domestic dispute and knew his address. Without backup, Deputy Cure chose to confront him at his home. The man appeared intoxicated and tried to walk away while she read him his Miranda rights. He repeatedly protested and asked her not to touch him. The situation escalated when Deputy Cure grabbed him to prevent him from leaving, asserting her authority to arrest him if he tried to flee. Sphinx this morning? Yeah? Okay. So what's going to happen next? I'm going to read you Miranda, your Miranda rights. All right? Because I have suspicion that you stole from them this morning. Okay? Then I'm going to ask you some questions. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Hey, where are you going? Hey, 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 hey. No, you're not. Hey, hey, listen. Please don't, please, please don't do that. You don't run away I was from me. Sexually abused, and this I, is nothing and sexual. Do not leave me again. Do you understand? Don't grab me. Do not run away do from me. Do not grab me. You may arrest you right here and right now. I don't give a what you do. Okay. Do not grab me. Do not walk away from me, or I will put hands I on you. I respect you, and I will talk to you. Okay. Don't walk away from me. Don't. Grab me. That I can't guarantee. Don't f hey, grab hey, me. Hey, 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 hey. Don't you talk to her like that. I will talk to her no, anywhere you I want. Not. She informed him that her partner was on the way and that he would be arrested if he attempted to run up the stairs. Despite her attempts to defuse the situation, the man resisted and his mother intervened, trying to assist the officer. Hey, you're staying down here. Oh. Come on. Oh my God. Yeah. 
You don't cannot touch, touch me. me. Just don't touch me. That's all I'm asking okay. you. Stay all right down here. All I'm asking you is don't touch me. Watch out. Don't, don't, touch touch don't touch me. Come back down here right no, now. Don't touch me. Come on, let's go. No. Listen, my partner's coming. You're gonna be under arrest. Get back down here right now. That's fine. I can be under arrest. Come down. Let's go. Let's go. Please don't touch me like that. You cannot walk away from a police officer. Let's go. Get down here. As the deputy persisted in trying to arrest the man, he continued to try to walk away, insisting he didn't want to fight her. Eventually, he came down the stairs, but the situation quickly escalated. Listen to me. No. Are you, are you, are you gonna be mean? Or you can do this nice? I'm asking you to do this I'm asking this you nice. to put your hands behind your back. I'm asking you to do this nice. Get out of the way! Get I'm out asking the way. you to do this nice. Hey, hey. Feeling threatened when the man grabbed her wrist, the deputy drew her pistol. In the chaos that followed, a bullet was accidentally released, striking the man's mother. Me. I am stronger than I you. Let go, go of me! I can do whatever I want. Let go of me! You put your hands down! You want to shoot me, you Put your hands down. Do not tell me what to do. I know. Can you wait No! Back up! Back up! Back up! Back up! You don't tell me! You don't tell me! Feeling threatened, the deputy drew her pistol in the presence of innocent bystanders. But the incident wasn't over yet. You want to punch me, you to punch me. Are you alright? Are you okay? I got you. Backup arrived shortly after, and amidst the confusion, the backup officer kicked the suspect in the face. The suspect, Sean Kaiser, was then handcuffed and charged with multiple offenses, including resisting arrest and aggravated assault and battery. His mother, who endured the incident, was hospitalized for over a month and underwent 10 medical procedures. The deputy involved, found to have violated Greenville County Sheriff's Office arrest policies, faced internal scrutiny, but retained her position. According to Lieutenant Ryan Flood, the deputy received disciplinary action and was scheduled for counseling and remedial training. On March 11, 2023, around 8.50 p.m., Louis Jackson was driving home after a night out when he crashed into a fence. A Merced County Sheriff's deputy came to the scene and started recording what happened. Soon after, former Sergeant Dustin Witt, 42, arrived to help. Mr. Jackson admitted to the officers that he had been drinking and was at fault. As the routine situation unfolded, things took a sudden turn. I'm gonna be transparent with you, okay? Go ahead. All right, um, just because due to the condition that that the car went through the fence stuff and stuff, and you did say you had been drinking. But I'm gonna have. Uh, a I'm going to jail. Test. There's no need for a sobriety test or nothing. Like, I'm, sure. a, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. Yeah. Just wait right here. Okay? So look, they're they're just they're gonna do their test, okay? But I'm just wanting. I'm not to waste your guys' time. There's no need for sobriety test. I'm drunk. Okay. I've been drinking. There's well, we obviously. Don't need. A licensed driver to drive a car, right? Not necessarily. Jackson, clearly intoxicated and admitting to it, suddenly accuses Officer Dustin Witt of making advances toward his girlfriend. In a reckless move, he swings at the officer. A big mistake. Jackson is about to learn the consequences the hard way. It's a stark reminder of the risks of letting alcohol speak in front of law enforcement. Assaulting an officer is a serious offense, requiring the defendant to meet specific criteria, which Jackson did by approaching an officer with intent during an official police matter. However, given his intoxicated state, officers are expected to handle such situations with restraint, as you'll soon see violated. Hey, bro. 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 It's okay. We got him. We got him. Okay. Place your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back now. Are you going to get another tase? Listen. Thank you. 
After Louis Jackson missed swinging at Officer Witt, another deputy tased him from behind, incapacitating him. While this was enough to subdue Jackson, Officer Witt continued with a vengeful act. He repeatedly kicked Jackson in the head, while Jackson's head was under the car, causing him to lose consciousness due to blunt force trauma. The aggression was severe enough that the other deputy had to intervene and tell Officer Witt to stop. Despite Jackson being unconscious and in handcuffs, Officer Witt then stepped on Jackson's neck. Hey, stop playing like that. Roll over. Roll over. Come on. Come on. Come on. First that's me. Sorry, 1140. Hell. Roll over. Oh, I'm sorry. Roll over. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Sit up. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Sit up. This incident reflects poor policing. After viciously attacking an incapacitated man, Officer Witt had the audacity to mockingly tell the unconscious victim to stop pretending. He eventually called for an ambulance upon noticing Jackson's labored breathing, likely a result of his own actions. This entire situation serves as a clear example of what not to do and prompted an investigation into Officer Witt. It was revealed that he had a history of misconduct, having been previously charged with assault misdemeanors involving two individuals and demoted in 2019. Despite retiring in June 2023 during the investigation, he was later arrested on assault charges. It's safe to say he won't be fondly remembered in his former role. On July 20th, 2023, Wisconsin PD officers responded to a hit-and-run collision with multiple injuries. Witnesses identified four individuals, including a black woman with a baby and at least one black man. The police subsequently received a call from a nearby restaurant reporting that a group matching this description had entered the establishment. How long have you, you been here? We've been here for an hour and 45 minutes. So you don't know which vehicle you came in today? I know which car, which car is your is yours. They admitted their individual cars were parked right outside, suggesting they could have been easily located. However, interrupting a family meal is highly impolite. Despite being suspected of committing a hit and run and daring to dine in a restaurant, it's not entirely justifiable. The actual perpetrators were discovered hiding in the restaurant's restroom, a fact that these inexperienced detectives only learned after the fact. There's a bunch of juvenile people in here. Grab some guys. Hey, let's hop in here. Don't look away from me. Keep your hands out of your pockets. I'm not going to tell you to get in your stand. What happens? I got stopped. Well, then where's your car that you came in? Where's the car that you came in? Well, I'm talking about is we just had a car. All these people flee from it. Right? Hey, no, no, I'm talking about Okay. While the true criminals were hiding in the restroom, another group of officers grilled the family. While thorough investigation is important, it doesn't excuse their actions next. You guys gonna tell us what car you came in, we can be done. That's over with. How, they said somebody had red on, carrying a baby, so... Yeah, and then somebody else was in here with red on, too. But they're not here right now. Okay, then, yeah, so go find them. So then where's your car that you came in? Where's what you can do, you can Where's the car that you came in? You are detained right now until we can figure it out. Because I'm going to take my son to the restroom. Careful. Chill. Hey, don't touch me. Relax. You got a baby with you. Relax. Yeah, don't touch me. Relax. Then you'll be done. Excuse me. Excuse me. These officers were rounding up everyone in the restaurant as if it were some kind of strange game. Who is more suspicious? A group of teenagers goofing around in the restroom or a family trying to enjoy lunch with their child? The treatment these people received was completely unacceptable. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. My child. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? I'm confused. Can y'all give me some? What is going on? I'm trying to report. Yeah, but you're obstructing my investigation. Get out of here. Go over there. No, my workplace, bro. This back up. This where I'm back, back up. That's fine. You can record. You need to let us do our job. Okay, here, bro. I'm not. I'm not doing nothing. I'll just back up. I'm right here, bro. Stop no. moving towards us. No. Okay. No, cause I'm confused. I'm waiting on my food, my f child. What is going on? Y'all putting my hands. Wait, don't know. Clearly, 
these officers were on a power trip. Their behavior, including their readiness for confrontation with restaurant staff, reflects this. Then, they detain Shenya Ya's wife, using pepper spray and forcefully throwing her to the floor. This action was harsh, clearly illegal, and morally wrong. According to Wisconsin Statute Section 968.07, police officers are only authorized to use force that is reasonable under the circumstances. Does pepper spraying and forcefully restraining an unarmed woman seem reasonable to you? You cracked the window? Yeah. Why you want face burning? Where's my towel? In there. No, who has my towel? The staff member's in there. <gasps> they don't like, what the? He's in custody too. For so what? For resisting. Well, for what? We, y'all, what, y'all? Can we have a real conversation right now? No. Okay, well then there's no point in talking. She matches the description. She does? I, yeah, oh, she was wearing a red top. She is wearing a red top? That's the male that's in the red top. Oh. I'm gonna get mine going to the jail because I got a decontaminator from the spray. Okay. So. Y'all having like a party in here? What's going yeah, on? it's kicking in. Apparently, they just like hanging out in the Applebee's bathroom. So. Yeah, that's a new one. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, can you come here? Me? Not Different Kevin. How was this other couple involved? I have no idea. I came on. Who was out with them? Luke was with them. Luke's with one of the girls in the squad car. I, I, I heard them fighting. We come out here, I see Luke up on the table, like trying to yank her down, and plus, so I go to help Luke. Okay. And she continually resists. And then, do we believe that guy was involved with her? How do you go to the Yeah, the guy that over there with Mark, I yeah, mean, with, uh, with Mike, with Mike, was with her. So I don't know what the. No reason to believe that they were. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. These officers unjustly and violently assaulted an entire family based on their race without bothering to verify the facts. There was no credible evidence to justify treating what seemed to be a completely ordinary family in such a manner. This highlights sheer stupidity and misuse of authority. Sorry. No, they weren't in here? They were in here. I guess oh. so. So, uh, wild, you guys say you're sitting in Applebee's, but none of the staff seem to know who you guys are. And how many people are in this restaurant right now? Like six? Like five people? I think there's more cops in this restaurant than there are customers. They didn't They didn't come in with the child, right? As far as you know? Not that I didn't even see the woman in the restaurant at all. We're told we had a woman running with a baby, but this other couple that Luke's out with. I understand. So, the couple that Luke came out with. Had a baby. Yeah. I don't know if they were involved in what way, shape, or form. I know. So um, this gets reek of weed. Right. So we need to look. We need to look at this video and see what this is going to oh, show. Because they came in this. During the turmoil, the officers realized they had made a significant mistake. The actual suspects had entered through the back door, with one of them unable to walk, being carried by his companion. This scene likely resembled a father carrying a child, which led the officers to wrongly target the first family they encountered. What do we got? So the male that has the baby, what, you, what you're dealing with out there? Right. I'm dealing with everything. Well, same. 22.30, they walk in. They're already here at the bathroom, so they're not involved with this car accident. So whatever happened with them is totally separate with this car accident. We're looking at here, call came out at 22.57. I'm trying to figure out when these kids run to the bathroom. They did not eat in my restaurant. They, the, the server said no one waited tables on them. So we have the male black adult. He's not involved. Not involved. There's no way. And then the, the adult there. female black, not yep. involved. I'm assuming they came together, Will. Okay. We got them all coming in here. The reason why they thought it was a baby is because they were carrying Mark away from the car. It's all good. Okay. We're just going to be walking over to that gentleman right there, okay? So the reason why they thought it was a baby is because they were carrying the paralyzed Mark Garrett in through the side. It's a great man. We got him on video all coming through this door right before the accident, or right after the accident. The oh, side door, right? The side door. Yeah. All of those guys in the car. All of those guys in the back. Okay. Reeks of weed, like super strong of weed. After the incident, Kenosha police started an internal investigation to see if the force used was too much. In November, they said both officers broke the rules. One got a four-day break, and the other got a 10-day break. On February 20th, 2014, a YouTube auditor known as Knowledge's Power was pulled over for having illegal tires. Fortunately, he was well aware of his rights during the ensuing encounter, which was recorded by his dash cam. Howdy. Go Doing good about yourself. Oh, you want down there, I'm comfortable right there. You what? I'm com I'm comfortable with it right there. You're comfortable with it right there? Yes, sir. Let me see your driver's license. Open the door, dude. Uh, if you want to take the back, you can roll that window down. What'd you say, sir? 
Sorry. What do you say? Because they can't hardly hear you. That's why. If you roll the window down, we're just out looking for drunks, man. We're not here to hurt you or whatever. That's fine. I just... Okay. Pull over on that side or just move. I'm going to take the okay? For what reason do you have to detain me to pull me over in a second? Initially, the trooper repeatedly attempted to open the auditor's door, citing difficulty in hearing him. However, upon noticing the dash cam, the trooper quickly became more cautious in their approach. Have you suspected huh? me of committing a crime? Do what, buddy? Have you suspected me of committing a crime? Good well, is there anything wrong with a car that we need to know about? Not that I know, sir. Oh, okay, all right. They're looking what? Almost illegal. All right. So I'm being pulled into secondary because my tires might be illegal. That's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Correct on your license. You still live at the same address? I do, sir. Right, sit tight for me, okay? Put in my car and park. For the record, they tried to open my door just because I wouldn't roll my window down all the way before asking for my license or anything. The officers noticed the tires when pulling the driver over to the side. Interestingly, they also included drugs among the items they claimed to be searching for in the car. So they said they were looking for drugs. Yes, sir. Why does that mean? Yes, sir. He wants to show you a tire out here, man. slick. I'd prefer to not get out of my vehicle. They were slick out here. For your safety, that way you can see about getting you another tire. That's it. Let me ask you something. Are you scared? To get out of my vehicle? Yes, sir. You are? Yes, sir. Why are you scared of the law? I'm not scared of the law. Where are you hiding from? I'm not hiding from anything, sir. Okay, well, why are you scared to get out? Because I feel safer. You scared of the dark? Maybe. Huh? I might be. Yeah, I believe you are. A grown man is scared of the dark. That sounds kind of funny to me. <laughs> sounds funny. The officers clearly attempted to intimidate the auditor, pressuring him to exit the vehicle, which he wisely refused to do. He understood the potential consequences of being labeled suspicious by corrupt officers like those present, remaining vigilant for any indication of misconduct. Note they're shining a light in the camera. Funny. The first thing they said is they were looking for drunks. Still haven't been asked if I'd been drinking or not yet. Funny. Suddenly, it doesn't seem to be that's what they're looking for. I see this pickle out on the road again. Yes, sir. I'm gonna stop it just because that tire on the right front. Tire on the right it's front? Very close. In what way? It so I can change it? Needs a tire replaced. Tire replaced? Yeah, you don't Treads know Trooper thin. Mike Freeman, do you? Who? Trooper Mike Freeman. Not that I know of. You don't know him? Remember him riding you for 84 and 65? Yes, sir. On 575? See why he's scared to get out now. That no, he was very professional. I actually had a good encounter. It's fortunate that the driver knew his rights, highlighting the importance of understanding legal protections to avoid wrongful detention. It's noteworthy that even today, some officers might defend such actions. Filming police is generally legal, except in cases involving minors or civilians where privacy concerns apply. On September 8, 2019, around 6.30 p.m., Milwaukee police tried to stop a car driven by 24-year-old Kevin Brown for speeding and running a red light on the city's north side. Instead of stopping, Brown led officers on a 19-minute chase covering 14 miles. The report describes Brown's reckless driving, no headlights, ignoring stop signs and signals, speeds over 80 miles per hour, and even ramming a police car. Police tried to stop him with spike strips. Reports suggest Brown used his phone during the chase. Brown's friend Terry Davis received an accidental call during the chase and heard what was happening. Davis knew Brown well, as Brown was engaged to Davis's daughter. The chase ended when Brown abandoned his car and fled on foot in a Milwaukee neighborhood. A responding officer pursued and apprehended him. What followed became a nightmare for Terry Davis. Hey, no, he's hit, he's hit. 
Shot. Oh, me. What? Me. That was me. He turned around and went like this. He turned around and went like this. Oh. Davis was fired in the stomach by Officer Zen. Davis himself released body camera footage online, not the Milwaukee police. Police stated they believed Brown, possibly Davis, was reaching for a weapon, leading to the discharge of a weapon. Brown was arrested and convicted. The Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office decided not to charge Officer Nicholas Zen, who had been on the force for 1.5 years. Shortly after, the Fire and Police Commission instructed more details about the incident to be released. Zen was subsequently fired by Chief Alfonso Morales. Following the incident, 43-year-old Davis filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against the city, seeking damages for physical and psychological injuries. He claimed that the police department only provided him access to a 50-second clip. In an interview with the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Davis stated, I haven't heard from the city since it happened. No apology, no nothing. On July 12, 2022, Travis Hines was minding his own business, walking around his car in a parking lot in Mason City, Iowa. Officer Mark Teton arrived and positioned himself at the driveway exit of the parking lot, observing Travis before eventually approaching him. Hi there. Hey, what's up? How much? How are you? Uh, is there a call? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that your park back here? Are you living? Yeah. Living? Are you living out of your car? Are you getting in my face? Are we gonna get in a fight or something? Are you okay, man? Well, you just, I mean, there's usually a comfortable distance, you know, people have, and you're just getting in my face. But did they, what, what was the report? Is there like a That your parked a serious, been parked here for days. Yeah, but is there like a, a serious complaint? Or are they just doing like a well, saying that you should check on them as a well, as a part of like well, a welfare check? It's just kind of strange that people are just <clears throat> parked on a roadway. Oh, strange on, on a roadway? Yeah. Where do people normally uh, park? Like, what, what's the regulation about parking on the side of the road? Well, after 72 hours, we'll tow the vehicle. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't been here 72 hours, so, all right. Looks like I'm good. Are you the registered owner of the car? Yeah, this is my car. Yep. So what's, what? what's, what's with the long stare there? You're giving me this thousand-yard stare. Like there's you're acting a weird. I'm acting weird. You're weird. acting weird. Uh, by being so standoffish. Standoffish? Well, um, heavy. it's it's a standoffish as in I'm backed into the corner of my door here. You walk up to me like, this is this is like punching range, okay? You okay, just walk so up. Do you want to punch me? Is that your Well, do you, your do you want to get closer to me? I mean, I don't understand this, this uh, comfort zone that you have. I mean, for a while we had this COVID issue with this six feet thing. And I don't know if you even respected that. Did you wear a mask during COVID? That's irrelevant to what we're doing here. Mark was clearly invading Travis's personal space. Officers sometimes do this to provoke a reaction that they can use as justification for physical intervention. What else you want to do for your investigation? You checked out my car. You're calling me weird. I don't know how that's a part of an investigation. What do you? Well, what's? What do you want? What are you? Are you, are you what criminal? What? Or or? I'm auditing now. <laughs> I mean, I just minding my own business. You showed up. Travis, right? The rest of the vehicle. What? What's the call? I don't. I already told you it's a parking complaint. The parking complaint. Yeah, and I was gonna give you some options. Tell you where a homeless shelter is, but. I mean, this this is uh this is fine. I mean, there's no there's no signs that say anything about uh, the problems here or whatever. I mean, I see downtown. There's around the library because I, I I went to the library today, mm -hmm. and there's four hour parking on the side of the roads. I mean, I seen that. You guys are probably a little more strict about that. But you're, you're coming out here like it's in the city. Like there's. Like there's a pro the city. well, I mean more in the We're center. In the is there a four-hour parking on? City. Is there a four-hour parking no, on the side of this? Not. Okay, there's a little difference in priority. There's a little more congestion yep. towards the center of the city. Travis, who was homeless and living in his car, parked away from the city center to avoid congestion, was reported by someone who likely had no concern for the homeless. Officer Mark confronted him, but eventually left him alone, allowing Travis to continue his day. Mark might have been wary that Travis could be a First Amendment auditor. It shows that such audits can indeed have an impact. On January 7th, filmmaker Ryan Coogler, 
known for directing the popular Marvel film Black Panther, encountered a problem at a Bank of America branch in Atlanta. Coogler needed to withdraw $12,000 in cash discreetly and wrote a note to the teller to avoid drawing attention. Unfortunately, the teller misunderstood the note, possibly finding the request suspicious due to the large amount and Coogler's desire for privacy. As a precaution, the teller alerted the police, who arrived and arrested Coogler despite his innocent intentions of simply conducting a transaction. You need some air? I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. I just, I just can't believe this, man. Is that, is that, my, is that my, my family's baby nurse? Did y'all have her detained right now? Who? Senior. The baby nurse, the, the Filipino woman that was in the back seat. Did y'all have her detained right now? Yes. She's just being detained. All right. Uh, can you, uh, just, did the officers explain what's going on while we're out here? Not really, man. All right, so we got yeah, a call base. I, 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 heard, I heard somebody ask me if I passed a note. So yeah. So, goes, so ba basically, we got a call, and uh, from what we got the call, it seems like someone was trying to rob the bank. Uh, something about you passing a note to the teller, something to that effect. Uh, can you just tell me what's going on? Or? Yeah, bro. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medical emergency. Right. Yeah, it's a medical assistant that works in my house that prefers me paying in cash. Every time I make a withdrawal to pay her, you know. Because it's a, a large amount, she works a lot. Yeah. You know, if I if I don't if I don't write down on a note how much I went out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk, the whole bank ends up looking at me because they just hearing money going through the money through the account, and I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe getting money out like that. So every time I go to withdraw it, you know, I, I put that I put the amount, the account I want to take and all that, gotcha. and I put my own card in. And then, I, and then I usually take, I mean, I, I always just, just get, the, get the money from him, you know? Kugler explained that he prefers to pay his medical assistant in cash. So when he needs to withdraw a large sum, he writes a note to the teller explaining his request. He prefers discretion because counting the money at the counter can be noisy and draw attention. Additionally, he expressed concerns about safety when handling a large amount of cash in public. The police later clarified why Kugler was handcuffed. I gotta be honest with you, man. Y'all yeah. never, like, y'all never asked me what was going on. So yeah, well, unfortunately, we in in those situations, in a situation, where's your ID? In his pocket. In this. Is the ID in his pocket? Just hang tight. How? Sir, so the reason that we don't. Officer, uh, officer, officer. Give me a sec, man. Kugler was deeply affected by the ordeal, feeling shaken, anxious, and stressed. Initially unable to focus, and with his thoughts racing, he found it difficult to communicate with the officers. After a few minutes, however, he began to calm down. It was then that he asked the officer to remove his handcuffs, believing that without them, he could concentrate better and have a more constructive conversation. He also hoped the officer might be more open to hearing his perspective without him being restrained. Let me ask you a question, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking to me right now. And I'm cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. My team's driver's cuffed. Yeah. I imagine in the back of the car. Yeah. And and, and, and my baby nurse that takes care of my baby is cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. Is there any reason we can't have this conversation once you get these cuffs off everybody? And we, yeah. And we, and we back to being cheated like yeah, yeah. standing there in yeah. society. Is there that's any fine. reason for that, bro? Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get you out of the handcuffs. I mean, and get I'd love to have this conversation with you, man. But I got this, you. This is, this is, uh, I understand. We, don't. we we just, uh, I, while they're getting you guys out of handcuffs, um, I, 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 I stated to, to the officers that arrested me that had that had their Glocks out. Yeah. That I was pulling money on my own account. I understand. I, I put the I put my own bank card in there before the lady went in the back. You know what I'm saying? So, so and, and we we have to confirm that you gotta understand we can't we don't come out because of the seriousness of the call we don't just come out and unfortunately in a situation like that you don't get the benefit of the doubt we detain and then we ask questions later. Um, that's what exactly what I went inside for. Hey, you can you can take them out. The other people that are handcuffed. So that's why we come out with weapons. That's why you're detained, and then we ask questions later because of the nature of the call. So. Um, Say it again, sir. Um, it's not it's not it's not for me to say, man. Like I, I, I gotta get all your names. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not fine. a problem. Um, Y'all got cars. No, we no. don't have cards, but we'll. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you yeah, got you something to write on, um, do you have anything? I, I, I'm not reaching in the night and grabbing nothing, so no, so we, y'all can give me something okay. to write down on. Y'all can put we'll, it down. All right, so we can give you something. We'll, we'll, we'll get you something to give you. Right, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my own money out of my own account.
Hey, she can. She can you, 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 they can have a seat in the car. Yeah, she can go back. After showing his ID, the police quickly realized there was a misunderstanding. The bank had deemed Kugler's withdrawal suspicious, prompting them to call the police. Kugler and his friends were promptly released once the situation was clarified. The officers apologized for the inconvenience and explained that the bank had mistakenly flagged Kugler's transaction. Relieved but still shaken, Kugler and his companions were free to leave. It's hanging on my hip. Yeah. You feel me? Like it's not. Like, I gave him my bank card. You feel me? Yeah. Like I. I, I do, you, do, you, do, you, do you understand where we're coming from? Do you understand yeah. that we're not? We didn't just show up here and put draw guns on you. We showed up because the call was uh, came in. I, 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 I understand. Yeah. That's somebody. Yeah. That's all I know. Right now, you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, I know it's. I'm on, I'm on while you're trying to make a move. Hey, uh, y'all do me a favor and give it, uh, write down all our names and put it on it. After investigating, the police acknowledged the misunderstanding and expressed regret for how the situation was handled. They apologized to Kugler and his assistant for the inconvenience and their detention. Similarly, Bank of America apologized to Kugler, admitting fault for the confusion and any distress caused by the incident. In a statement to Variety, Kugler mentioned that Bank of America worked with him to resolve the issue satisfactorily, and he considered the matter resolved. Bank of America also issued a statement to CNN stating, It never should have happened and we have apologized to Mr. Kugler. In the heart of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, what started as a routine noise complaint quickly escalated into a troubling encounter, leaving everyone involved deeply disgraced. Hey, dude. Come here. Hey, bro, Do you live there? Do you live here? I do live here. I come down here. No, sir. Excuse me? I'm not coming down there. Let me explain to you what's going on, okay? You're playing your music extremely loud. I'm not okay. I'm sorry. I'm going back to my apartment. Instead of knocking courteously on the door, the officers opted for a less appealing approach to address the situation. Come here. Hello? Come here. No, sir. Let me explain something to you, buddy, okay? No, 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 no sir. I will not come out. Maybe prime wow. air, change it to a 1080, pick her one number. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me, let me explain something to you, Bart. Excuse me. Get your... Excuse me. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you one more time. Yes, sir. Get out of this apartment. Can we talk right here? Wait, no, no. Brandon, you can take him out of this apartment. Go this go is your apartment. Sir, he is a good boy. Don't you touch him. What's your name? Don't you touch him. What's your name? Get out of the apartment. What is he under arrest for? No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, no, sir. No, he didn't touch your arm. Is he no, being, sir. Is he being no, arrested? Sir. Is he being hey, arrested? Hey, hey, sir. Or Caroline, Caroline. Is he being arrested or detained? No, Ask that. We are shutting the door. Ask, we are shutting the door. Ask if he's being arrested or detained. Sir? Ask if he's being arrested. Is he being is he arrested, arrested or detained? He is under arrest. For what? For what? For what? For what? Back up. For what? For what? For what? For what? What is he under Here, arrest for? Your arm, sir. What is he under Back arrest for? The officers' deeply questionable actions caused chaos among the students, leading the officers to reach a new low. On video. Get out of it. What is he having? Oh, do you? Get out of it. 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 Get out the students are facing charges ranging from obstructing governmental operations to harassment and resisting arrest, as if their offense was not disobedience, but merely questioning the authority of those sworn to protect and serve. 
an independent journalist, known as Sean, went to the Berwyn Police Department to investigate why the most sued officer is also among the highest paid and promoted. However, things quickly took a turn for the worse. Cameras are recording devices without prior approval. City administration. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How can I help you? Um, what office is this? I'm the city administrator. You're the city administrator? Well, you're a public official, obviously. You're the city administrator. I'm not elected. And that that wouldn't matter. Yes, it does. That you're you not elected. Door doors, yeah. I am not elected. But that doesn't matter. You still work for the government. Door doors, still work for the public. I'm not. I'm not escorting. Oh, I don't I'm think just you talking, are. But it's they got to sign up. Um, can't record that's, inside the building here. That sign is unconstitutional, sir. I'm I'm, I'm an independent journalist. So I have freedom of okay, press. But the problem is, state law. You can't. They got to sign up and unless they give you permission mm -hmm. to come in city hall and yeah. you have to go Well, I have right business channels. I have business to conduct here as well as my business of exercising my freedom of press. I'm, I'm working on a story on the city hall here, let's go, for let's transparency go here and accountability. And this is Ruth Siaba, the Green City Administrator of Berwyn. Her husband, David Green, the division commander, has faced multiple lawsuits, resulting in taxpayers paying over $80,000 in settlements. Despite this, he continues to be promoted, which some attribute to his wife's position as city administrator. Purpose. What do you, why are you here? Do so you my pur business my pur just So my purpose here, I've, I explained it to the detective and this officer, my purpose here is to um, I'm working on a story, freedom of press. I'm exercising my freedom of press rights. I'm an freedom of press rights. I'm an independent journalist, and also I'm conducting business as far as doing a freedom of information you got act. A journalist kind of card or something. A journalist card? No, yeah, no, I didn't make press myself one. Have press cards and stuff. I mean, I could make myself one, but the Constitution gives me the right of freedom of press. You know, it's so not how, not just journalists. How, how uh, until my story until my story is done. Could you give me an estimate? Um, depends on how long I need to do a Freedom of Information Act request. Even after explaining multiple times, officers continued to annoyingly question him about his purpose and motivations for investigating. Oh, uh, I'm not going to give my name. But, Why? Um, I just choose not to. Here's my name, Sergeant Volante. Okay. Sergeant Volante. Yeah. Thank you. Well, why won't you give me your name? I just don't have to. Okay. That's all. Trying to be polite. Yeah. The public building. Why would anybody Some care? just don't like to be recorded for no reason. I mean, not. There's, like cam there's cameras all over the place. These cops treated him as if he had broken into their house. Certain government employees didn't want to be recorded, so they escorted him out of the building. Yeah, sure, sure. Good. What other. Uh, Places, what other city houses have you been to? Oh, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Like what? What's a bunch? Just ones around here. I never saw that statue before. That's no, interesting. It's up there, so. Yeah, I would love. I would thank you for looking it up for me. This incompetent cop couldn't read a poster and had to Google it to understand. It raises questions about how such unintelligent individuals end up in these positions. Seems like everybody's leaving. Hey, Detective, I'm not being detained, am I? Right now, just hang on a minute. Am I being detained, sir? Both of these officers were struggling to figure out something they didn't understand, making it seem like nothing more than a waste of time. How about I grab his, try and grab his phone out of his hands and let's see what you do. You just saw him, you just saw him, it's on camera. You can't, it's, you just saw what he did. Come on, man, that's not, that's not cool. Am I being detained, sir? Right now, until we get this sorted out. Yes. We're, we're, we're talking. We're talking. If I'm not being detained, I'm going to go back inside and finish my business. You can't go back inside there. So I'm there's being detained. No, there's no recording in there. So I'm being detained. So, yes, you are right now. I'm but being detained. Until we That's... sort this matter out. Oh, okay, great. Yes. Unlawful, this is an unlawful detainment, that's what it is. 
As the officers tried their best to prevent him from entering the building, Officer Monaco attempted to grab his camera and detained him until they could find a lawful reason to arrest him. You just said it, not me. Stopping you from going back inside. Yeah, you just said I'm being detained. You said yes. You, right now, your words were right now I'm being detained. Exactly. That's what you just said. Investigation of what crime? Okay. What crime do you suspect me of committing? Sorting this out. Who do you work for? That you said you're I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm not talking to you anymore. You're a tyrant. You grab my phone. You put your hands on me. Don't ever do that again. That's that thin blue line, right? Where you guys just back each other up, no matter what. If I try to take your phone right now, just think about it logically. If I try to take your phone or do so or touch you in any way, I didn't take your phone. I was moving it out of my face. You're moving it out of your face. Yeah, because I don't want you recording. Well, I am. So. Don't you see? I'm still recording you. I'm still recording you, and I'm not going to stop giving, recording you. And I'm giving you the respect. That's why I'm not moving. Respect is not touching me. No. Okay. No, that's not respect. That's not respect. Monaco quickly retracted his statement, revealing himself as a pathological liar. These officers had no legitimate reason to stop Sean outside. They were essentially harassing him under the guise of an investigation. You could keep the phone. May I have your other hand, please? All right. You told me to keep the phone. Keep the phone. I don't want it to stop recording. Okay. I don't want it to stop recording. Why are you doing your big boy? It'll be Charles Union 12590. Wow, this is ridiculous. Where are you at? You cut off to keep my phone in my hand. Right now. I just took you it just out of his it. hand because oh. I don't want him to drop it. You put it in his pocket then. You know, I and then they arrested him for doing nothing illegal or unlawful. They showed no concern. The public will foot the bill for the lawsuit, and these corrupt officers will likely be promoted. Take them down. Take them down. I know. I know. I would like you to take those down, too. That would be awesome. You know you can. You got to go with those are against the Lord. Wait, let's get him. Governor let's, let's go. Let, he's taking down at least those. Take him down. It's not your king. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. One more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. After all of this went viral, the mayor arrived at the building merely to bolster his patriotic image by removing two posters from the door. As citizens, we must be mindful of how we empower others and how they wield that power. On September 14, 2023, a deputy pulled over a vehicle for multiple traffic violations. Upon approaching the driver, he immediately began acting rudely toward the deputy. Hello, Deputy Hines with the Sheriff's Office. Can I get your license, registration, and insurance, please? Put the drink down. I need your license. Put the drink. Ma'am. Excuse you. I need your license, your registration, and insurance. But don't be a bully. You're a bully. And I don't like woman bullies. Period. Where are you headed today, sir? I'm going to my doctor client. Ma'am. And guess what? You're messing with the wrong person. Okay. Sounds good. I need your registration and your insurance, please, sir. My insurance is on my phone. Okay. I need your registration. I'll take my sweet time. Sweet it's fine. Delray Beach. Is in Florida, sir. Yeah. You are not allowed to pass I on do. a double solid yellow line or I double solid done. breakdown okay. line, sir. You did it twice. I, I gave you the pass on the first one, and then you did it again. I have no points. I, doesn't matter, sir. I need your registration, you please, sir. I need your registration, I'll please, sir. You okay. You witnessed him repeatedly threatening the deputy, insisting that she was mistaken in confronting him. Despite his hostility, the deputy remained unfazed and proceeded with her duties calmly. She requested his registration, insurance, and driver's license with professionalism, ignoring his protests about unfair treatment and objections to what he called woman bullies. Throughout the encounter, the deputy stayed focused and determined, maintaining her composure. So when the little yellow sticker comes on, man, sir. Man, just don't tell me what to do! 
trying to help you find no, paperwork, I, sir. I have everything here. I'm a CEO. I'm retired. I work part time. Um, it's hot. It's frustrating when people do 30 or 20 miles an hour. I'm sorry, ma'am. This man claimed to be a CEO of a company, suggesting that laws shouldn't apply to him or could exempt him from the situation. Here you go, ma'am. Okay, so you're handing me your That's cell my phone. Insurance. Okay. And now you want my registration. Yes, sir. Here you go. Put your cell phone back, sir. I don't want don't to hold on to it. Don't just drop it. Hand it to me. You were looking you just, for paperwork. Did that? No, I saw sir, you. I did not. It's on camera. I did not, sir. I placed it down on well, your. You just give it to me. That's the old one. That's the old one. My, Do you have a current one, sir? You can tell if I'm registered. You know what? Do you have the current one, I sir? I can't find. It. Okay, so you, so you're I telling me you don't it. have your current one. I and you're can't not gonna find look for the, okay. it. One more time. I can't find it. So is everything good with your license, sir? It's not suspended I for any reason? I have zero reason? points. So your license is not I suspended? I have zero points. Okay. Stay in the car. I'll be right back with you, sir. This man's behavior became increasingly unacceptable. He falsely accused the deputy of mishandling his phone when she simply placed it on the seat. He attempted to intimidate her by boasting about his top lawyers and warning that she was targeting the wrong person. Despite his threats, the deputy remained unfazed. The situation escalated as the man began swearing at the deputy, oblivious to the consequences he was facing. Eventually, he drove away, leaving the scene. Later, the deputy unexpectedly encountered him at a convenience store. The unfolding events were unpredictable. They're coming. They're coming. The reason why I moved. Nope. I just moved nope. because I'm sick. No. I'm, I want to go to the hospital. Don't resist. I want to go to the hospital. Put your hand behind I your back right go now. To the hospital. I want to go to the hospital. Ma'am, I want to. Turn around and put your hand behind your I wanna, back. I'm sick. No. Ma'am, I'm sick. I'm Grab sick. Me one more time. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Ma'am, put your hand behind your back. Put it behind my back. I'm sick. Oh my God, you're going to be in trouble. I'm going to sue you for everything you got. I will sue I'll you ten. for everything you got. Show me 1015. All I did is pull over here so I can get some medicine. I need medicine, ma'am. Oh man, you're in 10, trouble. 1015. You're in trouble. I need medicine. Take me to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. You're going to stop. I need medicine. Wait till you find out how sick I am. Here, ma'am. Stop moving! You're gonna end up on the ground. Do you understand me? Help! 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 Can I have a sheriff, please? Another sheriff, please. I want another sheriff, please. No, please! Another sheriff! Oh my God! Oh my God! She's killing me! I just put, want to see another sheriff. I have my right. In. I will put it in, but I want to see another now. sheriff. Now. Can't you answer me? Now. Can you answer me? Can I have another sheriff? Is this another resisting charge, no. sir? Then get your butt in the car now. You're hurting me. I'm not. I'm, I'm get in the car. I am so sick, you can't imagine. I'm going get to the hospital. in the car. I'm going to the hospital. Now. As you watched, the man claimed he was sick and needed medicine, insisting he had to go to the hospital but refusing to cooperate with the deputy. He shouted, caused a scene, and attempted to intimidate others. He threatened to sue the deputy and demanded to speak with higher-ranking officers, escalating rather than calming the situation. Additional officers arrived, and he was eventually taken to the police station. Throughout the process, he remained aggressive toward the female deputy, exacerbating the situation for everyone involved. In the end, his actions only compounded the difficulties for all parties. What hospital are we going to? Ma'am, what hospital are we going to? I'm recording this whole thing. What hospital are we going to, ma'am? What hospital <laughs> are we going to, ma'am? What hospital are we going to, ma'am? You are now. You don't answer? You're a... And you're a guy. 
way you manhandled me, I know who you are. You're a female. Okay. You didn't even give me a chance to say good afternoon or anything like good that before afternoon. you start talking to me like good that. Afternoon, sir. So calm down. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, we got steps that we got to follow, okay. and then we'll talk about the other stuff. I do Come out of the car. I just passed. I got it. I'm just making sure you understand where we're going. Okay. Come out of the car. Thank you. Slide forward. Are you Frank Schneider? Slide forward. Slide forward. He was later arrested for violence and resisting charges. Officer Reeves and Sergeant Brian Gilmore went to check out a suspicious car parked on the side of a public street on December 14th, 2023. They approached the person afterward. Talk to us. Yes. We're not doing anything illegal, right? It really just okay. parked on a public street. That's right. <clears throat> okay, cool. Just because somebody called in a suspicious car mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're doing anything illegal. The day specifically identify something illegal that I was doing. Did okay. I trust, did so I trust at this passing? point, at this point, the reason we're requesting the identification sure. is number one, we need to identify everybody we talk to. It's part of our routine. Here's some important background. People usually have the right to decline answering questions without risking immediate jail time under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. It appears that our officials here have overlooked that fact. It's accepted and it's it's something that's been it's been a, it's been approved by the Supreme Court. It's not the been state, it's and been the United not been, States Supreme Court. It's not been approved by any Supreme Court. Okay, all right. Well, unless you, can you have reasonable disagree all you want, but just because you think so doesn't Unless you have reasonable suspicion of a crime. Okay. Well, I don't have to provide any ID, sir. But you're a, you're on one of our streets in our town and in order for you to leave, who's, you're going to have to be legally able to drive. Who pays car. who's pays for these streets, sir? Excuse me? Who pays for the street? Upper Chichester Township. The township, right? The yep. people it's a taxpayer funded street, right? Mm -hmm. And I, that means I can park here, I can travel through here also. I can stop on the streets. It's not illegal for me to do that. In your investigation, what have you concluded that I've done that's that I illegal? I have somebody that's refusing to provide an And that's not illegal. Am I, it is am I under arrest? Sir. Under the vehicle code? Am I required. under arrest? Huh? You're not, you may be, and we'll have to find so that are out. Are you threatening me with arrest? Am I threatening you? No, I'm not threatening you. This person must have dealt with self-proclaimed know-it-alls before as well. Well, conduct your job. I'm not providing any ID because I didn't commit any crimes. You don't need to commit a crime yes, for us do. to ask you to yes, provide you ID, do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You need RAS. Without RAS, there's no probable cause. Okay, Is that illegal? Do you, can, can you just come here and identify me? They didn't say you were a punk flamingo either. So well, I that's fine. Thrilled, but I'm not providing any ID. Where do we go from here? I didn't do anything illegal. You're threatening me with arrest. I'm telling you that you need to provide identification. You're I'm part not of providing any investigation. You I'm are not, required. Do your investigation. Go and talk to the person who called and find out what I did that was illegal. Talk to them. Do your investigation. Do a thorough investigation. You just don't come here and talk to me. Talk to You're them, the see what there. I did. Because they called to talk to them. I didn't do anything wrong. You're not going to force me to identify. Did do wrong, but sir. do an investigation to see I if I did anything wrong. And in the state of Pennsylvania, yes. if you're in a, operating a motor vehicle, which is what you're doing. I'm not operating a motor vehicle. You I'm absolutely parked. are. I'm parked on a public street. You're in command and control of the vehicle. I'm parked on a public if street. If you were under the influence of alcohol or another drug, I could arrest you for DUI, but I'm you're not. I'm parked on a public street. Okay. Good. That's what I'm doing here. I'm parked on a public street. Doing nothing illegal. You're, you're not providing me the case number. That's correct. <laughs> okay, well then you're not getting any ID. Okay. What's the next step? Um, you'll probably get a citation for failure to provide driver. Sergeant Gilmore, finally realizing how silly his actions were, decided to change course. Can you call the dispatcher and give me this incident number? You I'd can, like to document you can stop this. At our police station, grab the incident number. So you're not providing incident number. I don't have an incident number until I go back and do the report. I can't just pull one out of thin air. I applaud this man for knowing his rights and refusing to be taken advantage of. I'm not gonna be surprised. I'm sorry. Sure. Hey, can I come under? Hey, do you, do you mind giving me an incident number, please? Yep. That's all I wanted. My name's Clap, badge number's 44. Thank you, Clap. Hey, have a good one. I just want an incident number. Literally, that's all. We because don't generate an incident number until it clears. So, all right. Until it clears what? Like the call? The radio system, yep. So and you're about to clear it, I would assume? You can get it tomorrow. Okay. Fortunately, not all police officers are naive, and he finds another officer who has the common sense to give him the incident number he needs. On November 25, 2021 in Manchester, Georgia, a police deputy approached Micah, who had just entered her car. The deputy had an issue to address with Micah. You see what I mean? Do I see what you mean? Yeah, you, weren't you over here walking around looking at business? Is that a crime? 
when they're closed, yeah. When you're over here loitering, yeah. It's not loitering. Yeah. So if I walk around. Listen to me. Okay. <laughs> all I'm asking is what you're doing over here, looking at business and all that. And then you come over here and you walk and get in your car. I guess you're ready to leave, right? Yeah, I am. Okay, well, it's my job at night. Can you call the supervisor, please? For what? For his couch. Because I know that I'm not committing a crime. Ma'am, I'm not saying you're committing a crime, please. Is loitering a crime? Ma'am. Yes, loitering is a crime, but you gotta understand. I'm trying to see why you're over here looking at the businesses. I don't have to have a reason because it's not a crime. I'm actually a business owner. Okay, that's and fine. And a resident of Manchester. And then why don't you just say that? Do you I have a business over here? No, I don't. Since when did window shopping become a crime? This detainment appears to involve racial profiling. Let's see if the supervisor handles the situation any differently than his deputy. Ma'am, I, I just explained was. to you what the Tell problem was. Tell him what the okay? problem was. All I'm saying is you're walking down Main Street looking at businesses as they're closed, okay? Yes. I don't know what you're doing, so I swoop around, you get back in your car, and I assume you're about to leave, right? Yes, I am. I'm okay, well, that's home. my job as an officer here to check on businesses at night, right? It's only 8.30. It doesn't matter. They're still closed. I understand that, but do you know that... Ma'am, all I am is making contact with you and seeing what you're doing. Guess what? I would have walked away and gone, gone with my business. That's if I it. had what? You're making it a problem. No, I do have a problem with you. Ma'am, you, know, ma you just told me it's harassment. It's my job. It is harassment. Okay. If I'm minding my business, I'm not breaking any laws. I can walk Ma'am, no one said you were and he can stop and talk, but he accused me of laundering. I said, I'm just I did not he accuse you of laundering. What's your issue with me right now? There's no issue, ma'am. So can I go? All I did was ask you so a question. So can I go? No. I, so I'm being detained? That's right now. The deputy lied to Micah's face, but the body cam footage clearly exposed the truth. These cops can harass civilians for no valid reason, particularly if you're African American. Micah then explained her reasons for being on the streets, hoping to get the officers to leave her alone. I'm 43 years old. Uh -huh. I've been living in Manchester the whole time, except when I leave and have to go to work and come back home. Uh -huh. So it's Thanksgiving night. Uh -huh. I don't know if you, you guys are probably not from Manchester, but if you've lived here and you've left and you come back home, on a night like this, Thanksgiving, you had dinner with the family. I want to get out, walk the streets, and I walk with my grandmother as a little girl. He's not saying he can't do that. What's he's just point? he's just saying you're walking down, looking at store windows when they're closed. He's just making sure everything. The cops stuck to their narrative, refusing to budge regardless of the logic presented to them. It was futile. Because you argue with them instead of just cooperating. All, all the law requires is that you satisfy his, his suspicions. That there's no crime. Why am I suspicious? Nobody said you were suspicious. I said his suspicions. So what you're is this? Taking, you're, what? you're twisting everything instead of going with the truth. Just be honest. Just be honest about everything. Don't take it twisted. No. I said suspicions, and you said you're suspicious. Because I'm that's, the only. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the only person that's here. Not being true. I'm the only person here. So you're not do this. suspicious. Okay. We're not going to do this, okay? He's, it's not. I don't know if you want to take. If you ain't got nothing else to do, but we do. I okay. got a lot. Yeah, we, do I want to we, enjoy my Thanksgiving? Well, no, no, so I don't think you do. I think you're looking for an argument. I'm not looking yeah, for an argument. But you're lying when you're, you're saying I said you're suspicious when I said satisfy his Officer, suspicion. Listen. Just be honest in life. I'm not, don't make this something that oh, it's not got the right. yeah. so, okay. Is he calling the building suspicious? Is, is he? What's causing this suspicion? Are you this serious? Suspicion? You're asking if he's calling a business. He's See, calling you, me. You would argue with that sign right there, wouldn't no. you? Yes, you would. No. You would argue with that sign. I just, you just asked us if he's calling that business suspicious. Well, it's Are only me in the building. Look, when my child was three years old, they wouldn't ask something like that. Come on now. What do you want? All he did was just make sure that you wasn't up to something. That's what they pay us to do, to make sure these businesses... Matter of fact, in a couple yeah, hours, yeah, you know what? he'll be walking Main Street himself to a, make sure all these right. doors are locked and yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, in about fine. two weeks, he'll be walking over there to make sure mine is. Well, that's fine. I just told him, I'm, I'm taking a walk. Nothing's you wrong. didn't tell me anything like that. No, because exactly. you came up in The cops then attempted to gaslight Micah and portray her as a liar. It's incidents like these that highlight the necessity for First Amendment auditors. And I look in a window, that's he, suspicious he, no, he of don't know. It's late at night, the stores are closed, it's Thanksgiving Day, you know they're not open. I know they're not open. That, right there, that right there. So because they're not open, I, I can't said. look in the window? He didn't say that. He's just making sure that's all you're doing. I mean, there's no way for him to know that unless he gets out with you. This officer oh, done his job. Wow. And I'm sorry you're offended by that. Okay. But, you know, so you I need to toughen your skin up a little bit. Really? No, I'm well, not just, telling you that. Just toughen up a little bit. Okay. You're going to live a hard sure. life. 
that I'm not breaking in the building. Thank you for doing that. No, he didn't do it for you. He did it for the business owner. Well, thank, Make I'm, no mistake well, about I'm that. I'm speaking okay. for the business community because I'm a, I'm, I'm a part of the business community. Good so day. as a member of the business community, thank you for making sure that I wasn't breaking into the store. The supervisor failed to provide any explanation or justification for his deputy's actions. He continued talking without presenting any evidence, relying solely on what his subordinate had told him. It was clear that these officers were intent on harassing Mika. After Micah posted the video online, it garnered thousands of views, with people from across America expressing their support for her. She even issued a thank you note to acknowledge the overwhelming public support. A man named Art Bart uploaded a video to his YouTube account where he confronted two unscrupulous officers in the middle of the night who were attempting to enter his home for unknown reasons. Excuse me? Police. Who? Um. No one called you guys. I'm sorry. Coming in for what? We need to verify who's in this apartment. What's that? We're trying to verify who's in this apartment. Oh, what? I'm, what? What was the reason? There's nobody there's supposed to be in this apartment. How? How do you feel that? We got paperwork says there's nobody supposed to be in the apartment. Meaning what? We need to verify who's in the apartment. I need you to come outside. I'm sorry. I'm not intruding. So if right, the listen, pa listen. if the paperwork listen. says. Listen. I don't have any court order or anything. I'm sorry. I don't know who you guys are. I don't want you guys to come into my property. I see you guys already breaking in. I already have already already have a um already have a complaint already about this. Okay, Two well, guys in a um F-150. I'm sure they know the people. Yeah. Unlawfully coming over here and uh tell us if you can tell us who's in the apartment and you're supposed to be here, then we're gonna leave. But if you're not on the lease, then those guys said it was a woman's name on the lease. They also said it wasn't my name. I have it on video that they didn't even ask me my name. What is your name? So the police were checking who was in the flat in the middle of the night. Naturally, the man refused to comply with their requests and focused on ensuring his own safety. It's not a break. Y'all funny, right? It's not a break in or else y'all would have been in it. You feel me? It, it's not a break in. That's my proof right there. It's locked. Hey, hey, am I harming you? No, ain't nobody back there. What you talking about? Ain't no break in. That, I'm the proof. You see shattered glass? No, ain't no probable cause, bro. Calm down. Y'all have a good night, man. I'm gonna have a good night. Not done yet. Y'all not done yet? What do y'all need? Your information. It's almost coming. It's almost coming off. Cause she came out with her gun out. For what reason, bruh? This is my crib. I don't know who out there, so why would I come out and y'all got your guns out? You got your gun out cause you don't know what's inside. You know, you had your gun out cause you don't know what's inside. But you want me to come out and you had your gun out. But I do know what's out there. I do know what's out there. I do know what's out there. There's, there's a cop who doesn't patrol the city, who doesn't live in the city he patrolling. That's one that's out there. Probably his next door neighbor out there in Novire, Canada, or Westland. You know a black nigga lay here? It didn't matter. You came out with Because you didn't know what was here. You still don't know what was here. That's why you came out. It don't matter. That's cool because it's my crib. I don't have to make sense. Don't y'all do shit like that with y'all kids? It's my crib. I gotta do that. Right. Like I said, if y'all want to come, do what y'all got to do. Because I told y'all my information at. And I can't go find it right now with y'all like out here like this, like that. For sure, for sure. The officers then called the sergeant, hoping he would de-escalate the situation, but he did the opposite. It's disappointing, but unfortunately, it's not uncommon in such situations involving law enforcement. You know a black nigga lay here? It didn't matter. You came out with your because you didn't know what was here. You still don't know what's here. That's why you came out. With your it don't matter. That's cool because it's my crib. I don't have to make sense. Don't y'all do shit like that with y'all kids? It's my career, I gotta do that. Right, like I said, if y'all wanna come, do what y'all gotta do. Because I told y'all my information at. And I can't go find it right now with y'all like out here like this, like that. For sure, for sure. Which is in my car? Which is in my car? Okay. I don't feel safe to go outside as you see. That's cool.
Uh, Please okay. say that again. Please say that again. Mm-hmm. Like you're occupying this the I'm so sorry. I did not hear that. Listen to this guy. Listen to what he, listen to what this guy just, this officer just told me. In my house, I haven't broke in. As you see, no, no glass nowhere. No, no, no signs of breaking. You can breaking talk in all you want. But you have not provided us with any documentation yet. So you can keep talking, but I'm telling you what's going to happen. Okay? I've been nothing but polite to you and respectful, and you've not provided me with anything that I've asked. I'm telling you what's going to happen. If I don't get provided with these documentation. Okay. Okay? Okay. So your response to that is what? I need to see your identification mm -hmm. and a lease agreement. Okay. Without those two things, okay. we're going to come in there. Okay. We're going to place you in handcuffs. We're going to arrest you for illegal occupation of this unit. Okay? Because on, on whose grounds? Who said that I was illegally... Uh, the owners. Uh, the, owners the owners who? The owners who? Of what management company? Please state their names. I don't, you can't just say you, the management company. You have to provide us with some documentation. Who That's is right. authorizing that I'm here illegally? The police were insistent on seeing his ID. It's a surreal situation, your home being invaded just for identification purposes. It raises serious questions about the methods and priorities of law enforcement in such cases. Ralph Rubin, a lot of stuff. Right, what's on your government ID? I have to find it. I'm sure it's probably, uh... You said it's in your car. It's possibly in my car. Well, let's go take a look and see if it is. I don't really feel too comfortable coming outside with you guys just having your guns out or she had her gun out. out. She had her gun out. Okay. Uh, a lot of stuff happening. Even with cameras on, y'all still kill people, so. Uh, yeah. Well, when they shoot at us, we shoot back. So. The person that you guys are looking for could be on their way if you guys would let me know who's on the lease. But you guys don't want to tell me that that's confidentiality or something? Or you guys just want to throw me out? I sleep with a couple girls, you know what I'm saying? I got a couple women that I talk to. But if you guys would tell me this name, it could ring a bell, and I could say, oh yeah, her, she's coming, type stuff. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, hey, right? That was, that was illegal what she was doing. That's why she ain't finished. Cause she about to get y'all hold the park. in my second lawsuit, I swear to God. Just like that, the officers left. They likely realized they were overstepping the law and harassing an innocent person. The abuse of power has evidently disconnected some officers from reality. The video brought at least three of them to their senses. Now, millions of people on the internet are aware of these unethical actions by the police. This auditor filed a complaint about their careless actions at the Maryland Capitol Police headquarters in Annapolis. This is a lawful and legitimate action. However, he is surprised by what he discovers as soon as he enters the building. Yep. So I was here uh, a couple weeks ago and I turned this in and it wasn't, uh... Hold on. Oh. The receptionist immediately opposes the auditor without cause. She doesn't even know who he is or what he wants, yet she behaves poorly. It raises concerns about the behavior of the rest of her team. Regardless, it's during business hours on a, on a business day. There has to be somebody to accept this. So then why does she say he wasn't here? Why did she say he wasn't here then? What is the issue? I'm trying to turn in paperwork. I don't know why the lady that came out there who was originally going to help me came out and said, oh, there's no sergeant here to help you, so, and just shook her, so, okay. so well, what is that supposed to mean? Well, I'm just saying they're all on legislation, so. We were. Okay, so what is that, you got down here pretty quick, didn't you? There's another door. You got down here pretty quick for being in legislation, aren't you? Do you have a problem? You see how quick, I do have a problem. You see how quick you got down here when you thought that I was causing a disturbance or when someone cried to call oh, you down here, voice. but nobody could come down here to help me two seconds ago. Yeah, sir, I have paperwork to turn in. Don't walk away from me. Don't you tell me what to do. Sir, you're a public servant. I'm telling you. No, you're not telling me. I'm you. telling you. Do you want to get arrested again? Uh, sir, I'm doing... Pro sir, this is legal... Can you give me the papers. Yeah, it, it's, going to be da it's going to be date, stamp, and a copy to return to me. I have a date stamp. Well, get that, that's how it's done, sir. That's the official way it's done. You can't change protocol. You can't change protocol right. just because you don't want to deal with me, sir. I do want to deal with you. Okay, then please, I need these stamped. Copy it and return to me. To I need a date stamp. You guys have that. Where? Back in the office, sir. We're the only one. Every police right station now. has that. Can I see what you're talking about? 
No, you can get a date thing and you can come out here well, and then you can well, stamp my paperwork. One of two ways. You either cooperate well, with no, me. Well, no, sir, there's only one way this is handled. You're either going to cooperate with me. Sir, there's a legal way. Sir, there's a legal way of doing this. Okay, so then why is it that I'm asking them to why simply stamp it, sir? I'm asking them to. Stamp it as Finally, an officer acknowledges the presence of a receiving stamp. For some reason, this person is able to recognize it and handle it for him. Ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm doing legal business. Come with me. I was told oh, by the commissioner that I could do this. This right. is legal business. I have that? legal business. Come no, ma'am, I'm. this is legal business. I'm, I'm in a public person. lobby. I'm going to be here and I'm going to help you. Okay. Outside you're disturbing I'm not disturbing flow. anything, ma'am. You're disturbing No, I'm not, ma'am. I'm asking them to do their job. They're disturbing it I'm by here. refusing me I'm services, ma'am. What do you need? I need need these stamped and returned to me. Just observe how she's pushing the cops aside to make space for herself. She's clearly irritated about having to assist this person and deal with him. It seems like she's deeply involved in corruption. I need these done properly. I'm not interfering with the flow of business. They're refusing to do it. Hey, I want two sergeants here and the lieutenant. That's it. Everyone else can go. What's up, Barnes? How you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good. I'm hanging in there, buddy. I'm hanging in there. I'm trying to fill out complaints for what happened that day, but they're like, they're being ignorant about it. So why is it they can't come down here pretty quick to try and help me? I didn't, know we were I didn't even. I didn't because you came in here huffing and puffing, sir. Huffing and puffing. You you you, you threatened three times. You. you threatened three times to arrest me. You said you can leave or you're going to be arrested. So that's how I thought you were going to arrest me because you said it, sir. It came out of your mouth. That's why I thought that. Thank you. You might want to look at your camera. I have it. You might want to look at that. You might want to look at it. All right, that's not. Get him out of here. Go on. Get him out of here. I'm waiting for my paperwork, sir. Go outside. With no, me. sir. This is a public lobby. Michael Wilson, the head of police, arrives on the scene. Notice how unaware he is about the auditor conducting a legitimate audit. He just doesn't seem to understand that it's acceptable to file a complaint against a public official. Yes, sir. You have been told three times not to come and I'm look at me. And I've been told by the commissioner to that if I have legal business, I can come in this office, sir. You have been told three times not to trespass I'm into this building I'm doing because legal you create business. a problem when I'm you're here. I'm doing legal business, Now sir. I'm telling you to leave the building. I'm doing legal business, If you don't sir. leave the building, you're going to get arrested I'm doing, again. I'm doing legal and business, again, sir. And again, and again. I'm doing you're legal business, You're not to come back sir. here. I'm doing it's legal, business, legal business, sir. It is, sir. Get out or get locked up. I have a right. Put it, lock him up. Sir, I have a right to file You're grievances. You're for trespassing. No, I'm not. Yeah, you Rebecca, are. Rebecca, can you just please give me my paperwork so I can leave? That's too late for that. Sir, uh, Rebecca, it's what is going on out here? You're under arrest for trespassing. I'm not, sir. I'm You've doing legal business. You've been told to I'm leave? waiting for my paperwork so I can leave. Ma'am, please, that's all I'm waiting for so I can leave. That's, sir, I'm going to come back here. Am I going to move the This is a, I have a right to file these complaints, sir. Okay. Yeah, me and my cell phone. Uh, no. My keys, my cell phone, my wallet. I don't understand why I'm being arrested. I literally... Okay. <laughs> sir, I was told that if I had legal business... Sir, if I was... I have a legal right to be here if I'm filing a grievance, sir. I'm filing a grievance, sir. Sir, I'm filing a grievance. I'm allowed here. Sir, this, this is a violation of 18 Code US 242. It's a deprivation of public services. I have a right to file grievances with my government, sir. I was told by the commissioner when you got when he when he arrested me unlawfully out here last time and lied upon me and I was taking the commissioner. Uh -huh. I asked them, well, how is it that I can come back here to do this because I need? And they said you are allowed back there if you have legal and lawful business. They told me that filing this complaint is legal and lawful business. So how is it that I'm being trespassed, or how is it I'm being arrested for trespassing if I have a complaint that I filled out and filed? Your initial time that you came in, uh -huh. you you were um, trying to get. An investigation started. Going. I was trying to find out why my uh, tags have been taken off my car. I got you. I got you. And that's when I was arrested down here. Is this the second time you've you filled out this paperwork? Who'd you fill it out on the first time? The, on, you can see both of them right same there. One, the no, service? not the same thing. No, they're for different incidents, different, different days, oh, I different you. incidents. I got you. I got you. I filled out different incident forms for different days. So, so I didn't the, want to put five incidents on one thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah. So the first one was for the tags and all that stuff. All that justification for nothing. The cops seem incapable of thinking for themselves because they're drunk on power. They're only taking away citizens' rights and enforcing an authoritarian system. No, I haven't been banned. I haven't been banned, sir. You can't ban someone from doing a constitutionally protected activity. I have a right to file this, sir. You're right. I can't come here and just sit down and chill in the office. I can't go in there and do the security card process in the center. Mr. Salt, are you going to allow me to explain to you real quick? I would rather not speak to you, sir. Okay. Well, that's fine. 
the auditor allegedly endangered the officer's safety, leading to his arrest with a $1,000 bail. He was taken to the Anne Arundel County Detention Center on Jennifer Road in Annapolis, Maryland. The police managed to persuade the commissioner to hold him based on their report. This guy seems to have had some bad luck. On April 29, 2008, Roland Carnaby, a Lebanese-American believed to be a CIA agent, was pulled over by a Houston police officer for speeding on Texas State Highway 288 in his black Jeep Commander. When asked about his profession, Carnaby showed a badge indicating he was a CIA agent, but refused to allow officers to inspect it. He also pointed out a red and blue strobe light on his dashboard. Carnaby initially believed that showing an ID card with the CIA seal would resolve the situation situation, but the officer remained suspicious. Carnaby's nervous demeanor, an unexplained bullet hole in the left rear passenger door of his vehicle, and the unverifiable ID card all raised concerns. What's the ID again? Not every day you stop the bus with the CIA. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Car plate. So, the officer checked Carnaby's license in his squad car and found a concealed weapon permit, which was unusual because federal agents typically do not require such permits. Pressing for more proof of his CIA affiliation, the officer asked for Carnaby's supervisor's contact information for verification, but Carnaby's responses were not convincing. Instead, Carnaby made a call to someone he knew in HPD's Internal Affairs Division. The officer spoke with this contact, asking if Carnaby was employed by the CIA. The response was hesitant, suggesting he might be, but it wasn't definitive enough for the officer to let Carnaby go. The officer then contacted HPD's Criminal Intelligence and Major Offenders Divisions to verify Carnaby's credentials. There were some concerns associated with his name, but no clear confirmation. Given the uncertainty, the officer was advised to find a legitimate reason to arrest Carnaby because simple speeding wouldn't suffice. It was discovered that Carnaby had failed to present his concealed weapon permit, which violated Texas law. He was asked to exit the vehicle but something about this didn't sit right with Carnaby, prompting him to attempt an escape by speeding off. I've got one of our supervisors coming out to the scene right here. Can I get you to step out of your truck for me, sir? Step out of your truck for me, sir. Step out of your truck for me, sir. Are you armed now? During the chase, Carnaby spoke to a friend on the phone who urged him to stop, but he said he couldn't. He then tried calling the FBI and someone at the Houston Police Department, but received no assistance. The dangerous high-speed chase went on for 50 miles, reaching speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Eventually, Carnaby had to stop because his car was running low on fuel, but he still did not cooperate with the police. The first officer approached the passenger side and broke the window with a club because he thought Carnaby was behaving strangely and not following orders. Moments later, Carnaby opened his car door and stepped out from the driver's side. As he did, he accidentally dropped his shiny Blackberry and reached to pick it up from under the seat. Unfortunately, Officer Clark was approaching from the front with his weapon drawn and fired when he saw Carnaby reaching for something shiny. This action resulted in Carnaby's death. Carnaby fell face down on the pavement, bleeding for 12 minutes until he was rushed to the hospital. Unfortunately, upon arrival, he was pronounced dead. Following the incident, the police force was uncertain about how to communicate the details to the public. Carnaby's lawyer, Randall Callanan, doubted the necessity of discharging the weapon. Knew he was doing nothing wrong, so at that point, he knew it was an unlawful arrest. The facts show it was an unlawful arrest, and since he is in the CIA, he needs to uh, protect his information and his sources, and he fled. He wanted to understand why deadly force was used since Carnaby wasn't a felon, hadn't committed serious crimes, and hadn't brandished a weapon. Kalinan also requested to videotape Carnaby's autopsy, but the request was denied. Furthermore, a gag order was imposed on autopsy information, despite Houston typically having open autopsy details. Kalinan suggested bringing in the Texas Rangers to investigate and the FBI to check for evidence tampering 
happening due to the unusual circumstances, expressing doubt that the full truth would emerge. Internal Affairs conducted an investigation and deemed the incident justified, asserting that the officers acted according to their judgment. The police officers' union supported them, citing their split-second decisions. However, Officer Charles Foster faced disciplinary action for violating conduct rules. In 2010, Susan Carnaby, the widow, brought the case to the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, arguing that the officers lacked proper training and violated her husband's rights. Despite legal proceedings, the case was settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. Officer Clark remained with the Houston Police Department following the incident. I think under every jurisdiction, the officers were justified in the action they took, however tragic it might be. It's surprising how the CIA consistently denied any connection to Roland Carnaby. The black Jeep SUV he drove was reportedly owned by the National Security Command Center, initially thought to be non-existent but later revealed to be an NSA extension in Maryland. Inside the vehicle, authorities found two pistols, additional CIA identification, a laptop, and a cell phone. Strangely, all these items were confiscated by federal agents and nothing was returned to Carnaby's wife. There are rumors that some possessions and videos related related to the incident were disposed of by police, despite Carnaby's residence being filled with CIA-related items. The agency maintained he never worked for them. After Carnaby's death, the media quickly labeled him a CIA wannabe, despite strong indications he served his country. It's disturbing that no one came to his defense following the incident. Carnaby's lawyer was furious, describing how instead of assisting him, the officer handcuffed him and allowed him to bleed out on the pavement, which felt more like an assassination. Something Thing Carnaby might have feared. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.